When it comes to client design briefs, some can be challenging, some can be tricky, and some can be downright easy. This episode is all about easy changes and affordable fixes to take your bedrooms into a direction that is fresh and new and lovely. So what was the client brief you ask? Well, there were two daughters who have now moved away from home. We've gone from ballet slippers to the Mickey Mouse phase and right into sparkly shoes and now the girls no longer live at home. So we have clients who are now empty nesters and there were two bedrooms that hadn't had a great refresh in a long time. They felt cluttered and they felt dated and so really all my clients wanted was something that felt delightful, that felt well suited and tied into the rest of the home, that felt new, that felt fresh, that felt fabulous, warm, welcoming, and would be well suited to visiting travelers, children, and who knows, maybe future grandchildren. But no pressure there. So when it's that flexible, what do you do? Well, the first thing is, when it comes to designing bedrooms, I don't like any two bedrooms in a home to feel the same. If I've done it once, I don't wanna do it again. So what you'll notice is, I don't tend to repeat a palette throughout the house in multiple rooms. I don't just pick one palette and run with it. I think each room in the house is different. It has different features, different characteristics, and therefore, I always feel like it should have its own unique personality. So that's what I tried to achieve here. Right now, we are in this fabulous bedroom that also has this tiny little den off of it. So how should it work for the future? I decided it should be a little lounge area plus a desk area. I mean, this really is the ultimate visitor's sweet retreat. So if you are to be a guest in this home, you would get a plush, comfy, lovely queen-size bed, and then you'd get this adjacent sitting room. What's amazing about this cozy little sitting room is it faces south, east, and west in all types of weather. It's so beautiful. It's a cloudy day today, yet it's still bright and lovely. And it's this quiet little escape up here. So I thought it should have a comfy love seat, a fabulous chair so you can look out the window and a place to get work done. So whether my clients choose to use this as a home office space for themselves or whether they save this for visitors remains to be seen, but it is well suited to a variety of purposes. And I love the idea that if you were a visitor, you could just get up in the morning, tiptoe downstairs, make yourself a cup of coffee and come and sit here. Would I like to stay here? Oh, sure I would also because the hostess is a fabulous cook. So you'd know that breakfasts and everything would be just delicious. I wish more hotel rooms felt like this. Imagine a little bedroom, a cozy little sitting area where you can hang out. So what we decided to do for this room was to embrace watery shades. So this is aquas and blues and sort of softened teals all mixed together. The approach to the color for these two rooms was, I guess I would say it was flipped. In the bedroom, we have slightly stronger color on the headboard and we see color on the accent pillows, in the rug, and also on the window coverings. In the sitting room, we decided to do a wisp of color on the walls, just a tiny little bit because this room gets much more light. We have a colorful chair, colorful accent pillows, hits of color in the carpet, and again, the same window covering fabric used in both spaces, so it makes a seamless connection. The bedroom walls are painted in a soft, creamy tone, so this was really designed to be soothing and restful and calming, but also to be light and bright and pretty at any time of day. One of my favorite elements in this room is the curved lines. Look at these bedside tables and the dresser. I'd say this is borrowed from deco styling. Look at these amazing rounded shapes. There's a shelf on the bedside tables, gorgeous brass hardware. The exact same design is then applied to this double dresser. 
And regardless of whether you need all the storage in this double dresser, what it does make is a big, beautiful surface for guests to spread out on. If they wanna do their makeup in here, if they wanna put their toiletry bag, if they have stuff that they need to spread out, this is a great anchor for the room. It looks fabulous here. It's nestled between a pair of sconces with a really wow factor statement mirror. And what we've done is we've infused small touches. And I really say these are small touches of brass or gilded elements. We didn't want it to be too brash, too bold, or too overpowering. Everything here is designed to have a sense of quiet and calm. I would say this is casual elegance and quiet luxury. So everything feels good to the touch. From the beginning, I wanted this to feel like a great hotel room. Why? Because basically that's how it's going to be used for the future. The idea is to beckon the kids who've left home and live in other destinations to come back and visit. To make sure that when guests come, they feel pampered, rejuvenated, and most importantly, they feel welcome. So I really focused in this room on softness. And when I say softness, I keep going like this with my hands right you know I'm a big big hand talker and it's really about the silhouettes so you'll see there's an arc on the top of the headboard that's soft this is not a room filled with sharp angles and hard lines the rounded curvaceous profile of the side tables and the dresser look at the fun faceted shape on the mirror these sconces oh these sconces are so yummy they are a disc of blown swirled glass and the bulb shines through from the back so it just creates this beautiful glow the bedside lamps they have a, just a soft kind of bottle shape to them and then in this cozy little den we have alabaster lamps these lamps are carved out of solid alabaster I know touching lamps isn't something you know you're not supposed to pet the lamps but these lamps feel so good it's this matte honed alabaster they are so pretty when the light comes through them they're slightly translucent they're sitting on custom made side tables that are made from solid pieces of statuarietto marble and oh they were heavy they were quite a challenge to get in here and then all of the soft elements are balanced with some more crisp lines so we've got the desk which has a beautiful tapered leg and little fittings you know i'm all about the details it's about the hardware on the bedside tables and the dresser it's the little collar and the foot that's on the desk it's the curved back profile on the desk chair. It's the comfy way the chair sits. So I want you to remember, if you're thinking about redesigning a room, it's not just chair, check, desk, yup. You need to look at all the details. You need to think about how it functions, what the form is, how it feels, and how it's gonna work for you in your space. Above the desk, I've hung a mirror. And in case you're thinking, Sarah, that is so weird. I don't want to sit at a desk and look in the mirror. The reason I put a mirror above a desk, and this is something I sometimes do, is because it creates this beautiful reflection. And I think it creates the effect of a window in the room. The way the layout of the room worked, the desk was best placed on this wall. But I always want to be able to see out when I'm working. So the effect is that placing the mirror above the desk creates a fabulous reflection and draws the outside in. It's not about staring at yourself. However, it also does double duty because you never know how somebody's going to want to use this space. This could be a makeup table, a little vanity table here as an extra add-on amenity for guests. I'd say this is a pretty sweet suite. Now, let's go see the other room. There are three bedrooms in total in this house. In the last episode, I showed you the principal bedroom, which was a cloud-inspired oasis. The room we were just in was inspired by watery tones, aquas, and soft, pale blues. Now, we are in the final bedroom. And for this room, I wanted something that had a more organic feel, something that felt beachy and soft and natural. And this 
is the last bedroom on our tour. And in every single room I design, there is always a starting point. There is something that kickstarts the journey. For the principal bedroom, it was the fabric that we used on the pillows. And that's where our whole palette of creamy ivory pearl and silver came from in the sweet retreat next door. Those aquatones were drawn from the drapery fabric. And in this room, you know what the starting point was? Well, it might surprise you. It was the bed. A year ago, more than a year ago, I went shopping and I found this bed. I just think it's so cute. So this bed was actually the starting point for the entire room. This is an Ikea bed. And one of the best things about it is it comes in unfinished natural wood. It's raw wood so you could stain it. In this case, I decided to add a whitewash stain to it. I wanted to create a room that was more pared back, that felt light and natural. And I really wanted a room that had almost no color just layered textures, things that feel good, things that look beautiful. Paint is a funny thing. Finding the exact right neutral is challenging. And when you're doing an entire house renovation, you tend to spend a lot of time with a lot of different trades working on the house. So Paul the painter and I got to know each other quite well. And I sampled a whole bunch of colors that he hadn't used before. And one day I came in and he said, oh, Sarah, that color, that natural white, oh, I love that color. This is a color that I have been using for over 20 years. And I don't use it all the time, but it has a softness to it. It is just that ideal neutral. It isn't too beige, it's not too yellow, it's not too green, it's not too gray, it's not too blue. It's just calming, soothing, light, natural white. You really can't go wrong and you can't do any better. So I hope when you look at this room, you feel this kind of sandy, beachy, casual, yet still streamlined, tailored and sophisticated approach to this room. It's all about the texture. So look at the pillows. One looks to me like lines on the horizon, this kind of painterly brush stroke of tan and cream printed on linen. The pillow in front of it has these amazing little embroidered dots. It feels like the bubbles coming out of the water. The duvet cover has little flecks in a chevron pattern. It's just soft to the touch. It has a little bit of texture. The drapes have an almost barely there slub running through them. The case good pieces, that's the dresser and the bedside tables have a whitewashed finish. And sometimes this can feel more beachy, more traditional. In this case, look at how it's been paired with the hardware. I think the hardware is really stunning. It's so modern. It's chrome fittings on the end with these lucite posts that run right through. And then it's contrasted against the whitewashed oak finish. I think these pieces are fabulous. They make ideal bedside tables. You've got a drawer for storage, plus you get two shelves. I think that this is a very adaptable look and hint, I also used it somewhere else, but you're not gonna see that for quite a while. Later, in another house, maybe actually a beach house. Look at these lamps. I think these lamps are fabulous because they have a great scale, but they also are open and airy. It's just a frame that's been wrapped in rope. How genius is that? They're so well suited. So everything in this room is about texture, texture, texture. The rug on the floor. What's fun about this rug is it's got these super natural tones. Think about the colors at the water's edge. Think about the colors at the beach. I know, I haven't been to a beach in a long time. It's in, this is this room. Because this was a room designed during a pandemic, maybe this is a dreamscape of where I'd like to be on a beach. Think about the color of the sand and then the waves coming in. And that is what this rug represents to me. Last finishing touch is the artwork. And here's my approach. If you are smart, if you are somewhat frugal and spend savvy as you go through the project, when you get to the end, you can buy some art. So we bought two original pieces that flank either side of the bed and these are collages. So they're made with paper and then there's stitching on them. They're sort of multimedia pieces. I think they just add that extra nod of texture and layering and make this a dynamic 
soothing, restful, comforting, and welcoming space. Now, let's hope since we've created these gorgeous rooms, the girls come back to visit, or maybe I'll come visit. We've got lots more spaces in this house to show you, so make sure you subscribe and turn on that bell for notifications so you never miss an adventure or a journey in our design life.